Right, in this lesson we're going to go over um, how to uh, work with mass spring systems and this is an example of simple harmonic motion. So we'll call this um, six. Um, example of SHM the mass mm, mass spring system. All right, so we're going to um, show that this is SHM, and we're going to um, explain equation for the period of the mass of the system. Okay, so firstly, um, what we can do is um, just have a quick look at what a mass spring system looks like. So if we have a, um, say we have a trolley like this, this is like one of those physics lab carts, and we have it attached to a spring, oops, and this is a spring that can both compress and extend, so it'll push back if we try to shorten it, and it'll pull back if we try to stretch it. We've got it attached to a kind of wall here, and we pull the cart, say, to the left, uh, or no, we pull it to the right, let's say, and then the spring is going to pull back in the opposite direction and cause the cart to accelerate in the opposite direction. So we know from last year that the force on this cart is equal to negative k times x, and we know that that force is going to cause it to accelerate. That's got to be equal to ma, or m times a. So if we look at this, this does fit what we need for simple harmonic motion, in that what we end up getting is, if we rearrange this for the acceleration, we get that a is equal to negative k over m times x. So, and k and m are both constants, right? So the mass isn't changing, the spring constant isn't changing, so this stuff is constant. So, for this system, um, acceleration is clearly proportional to displacement. What I mean there is that if we double x, then a will clearly also double because this thing here is constant. And acceleration is in opposite direction. To displacement. So, um, so therefore, those are the two conditions that we require for something to be simple harmonic motion. We can say it is SHM. All right, so we've identified that it is simple harmonic motion, but we also have another equation for simple harmonic motion. We can say the equation for SHM is a is equal to negative omega squared x. So if we compare this constant here, omega squared, we can see that the angular frequency relates to the spring constant and the mass. So we can get from this an equation for the period of a mass spring system. So let's have a look at that. So we, let's start with omega squared equals negative k, so omega squared equals k over m, right? So we get, come on, there we go. 
um, we can call this um, the equation for period. of mass spring system. Okay. Now, we know from what we just saw, that omega squared is equal to k over m. But omega is equal to 2 pi over t. So we can replace that. So we get 4 pi squared over t squared is equal to k over m. If we just rearrange this a little bit, we can get an equation for t. So we get um, what we can do is we can flip both sides, so take the inverse of both sides and we're not changing anything. So we get t over 4 pi squared is equal to m over k, sorry, t squared. This should be squared. So we get t squared is just 4 pi squared m over k. And then we can just take the square root of both sides and we get t is equal to 2 pi times, and we have to square root everything on this side, so square root m over k. And this is the equation for the period of a mass spring system. This equation, by the way, is provided in your formula sheet, so you don't need to be able to derive it. But it's kind of cool to see that the equation for the time it takes for a mass spring system um, just comes from our equations for the force that the spring produces on the mass and the equation for, for simple harmonic motion. Okay, so this equation, although you don't need to be able to derive it, you do need to be able to use it. So what does this say? It says that if we make the mass bigger, it's going to take longer to complete a cycle. If we make the spring less stiff, it will take longer for the, spring, for the mass to complete one full cycle. So basically, if we want a really long period, we want to have a large mass and a very loose spring. If we want a short period, then we would have a small mass and a very stiff spring. Let's just have a look at a, a simulation that will allow us just to observe this happening. So here we have two springs, and at the moment they're set with the same spring constant. And what I can do is just take two equal masses and get them bouncing here. And I'll just pause it so that I can pull them both down at the same time to the same place. If I hit play here, you can see that they're both bouncing with the same period. So it takes the same amount of time for both of them to complete an oscillation. If I increase one of the spring constants, then my equation says that the period should decrease. So in other words, this one should complete a cycle in less time than this, time, this one. So let's have a look. So we can see that this one is completing a cycle in much less time than this one. Okay. If, on the other hand, I change the mass of one of them, so let's make them both the same again, and I'm going to put a much heavier mass on this one. So now what should happen oops, is that the heavier mass should complete a cycle in more time than the lighter mass, because the mass, increasing the mass should increase the period. And we can see that the larger mass is oscillating much more slowly than the smaller mass. Okay, so that kind of shows us the relationship there. 
Um, so what we'll do is we'll just have a look and see if we can use this to explain a couple of situations. So let's look at the first example. So um, um, how does the period of a of oscillation of a car full of students compare with that of an empty car Um, when it hits a bump. Okay, so the car full of students, I mean, presuming, assuming it's the same car with the same suspension, a car full of students will have more mass. So the mass will be bigger for the car full of students. So for the full car, M is greater. t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So um, if m is bigger, t will also be bigger. And that's because m appears in the numerator here. So if we increase m, then the period is also going to be bigger. Okay, so that's a fairly straightforward example. How would the period of oscillation change if the car had stiffer suspension springs? So we need to recognize here that stiffer springs means higher spring constant, k. t equals 2 pi square root m over k. So if k increases, T decreases. So we can see here K appears in the denominator here. So if we make K bigger, then this whole thing is going to become a smaller number, which means that the period is going to get shorter. Okay, so that kind of shows how to use the use the equation. Um, we can do one last one with a calculation. So eg 3 um, if the springs had spring constant of 30,000, this is the combined spring constant of all the springs, newtons per meter, and total mass was 1.4. For, well, 1,400 kilograms, let's say, was 1,400 kilograms. What would be the period? Um, so here, what we need to do is just plug in the numbers. So we've got um, t is equal to 2 pi square root m over k. So we get 2 pi times the square root of 1,400 over 30,000, which is 1,000. And we'll take the square root of that. 
and we'll multiply it by 2 times pi and we get a period of 1.36 seconds. So this car would bounce up and down with a period of 1.36 seconds if it was that mass and had that spring constant.